when the people come around your house. Put it on and say, yeah, I'm a child of God. I can't take you. You want some? in Christ. So I and everybody from everything from everybody. Live and be free. Receive the love of God. So I understand that when I come in Christ I'm a new creation. I'm qualified for everything. I can Nobody can see me. God will not see me after the flesh. Amen. God sees me as a spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Which means baby that the things that we focus on in church don't matter to him. Oh, right. Remember now, he chose us to live before him. Yes. I'm going to keep teaching not to you again. God chose us to live before him, not before church people. Amen. And we keep, see, some of us are so gifted, and we don't go to church because of church people. Right. And they need more money than us. Amen. Oh, y'all the bottom here. We, we don't go to church because of church people, because we have not been taught that God chose us to live before him. Yes. And he, put, he puts you in Christ so you can be holy without blame. He said, put you someplace where I can't punish you. Ouch! And, and what I want you to do is receive my love. Amen. So, how do I receive God's love? This great thing that includes everything that's in Christ. Or if I had time, I'd say, this, 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 you need a week to do this. What do I do, gentle love, to receive God's love? How? If you qualify for God's love, then you know you qualify now, say amen. Amen. I, I don't hear it, but I, I, I got to get this out of my spirit. If you know, you just heard this word, you know that you're in Christ. It does not matter. God does not see you after the flesh. If you know that God's accepted you in the beloved and you are qualified to receive his love, say amen. Amen. Now, allow yourself to receive it. How do you receive love? The same way you receive salvation. Believing. Believing is a system. Can I teach you all here before this? Before? Believing is a system. It's profession, confession. You profess it. You lay claim to it. You acknowledge it. You accept it. And it becomes real to you. You become legal. You have a right to it in God because you got it in your heart. But you activate it through your speech. Amen. Amen. So when you open your mouth and say, I believe that I received the love of God, uh -huh. to you that don't feel like nothing, uh -huh. to heaven that means everything. Amen. Let me back up, let me back up, let me back up, back up, preacher. Let me back up now. If I'm helping you, I'll just say amen. amen. You have to understand the power of your position and the power of your words. You have to understand that in Christ, God has given you all the power. Behold, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me and both the heaven. I don't care what's going on in your life. When you receive Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit. You have to understand that you have to be strengthened in the inner man with the spirit that dwells within you. And you have to stand up in the authority. You have to believe it. You have to believe that you're qualified for God's love. Preach, God. Preach, preacher. I'm going to stop right here for a minute. I'm going to stop and preach it, but I'm going to stop. Because they don't use me going around giving scriptures. I want you to get this. If you can hear me say amen. amen. I feel the anointing of God. Somebody pray for me. You as an individual, you have to receive... You have to lay a claim, profess, profession, job. You have to lay a claim to the truth that God loves me. Mm -hmm. and, I, and then you have to activate that love in your life with your speech. If you are eternally saved, glory to God. If you are eternally saved, that is your foundation to receive God's love. Because when you acknowledge your salvation, when you accept your salvation, now you're qualified. So now you have to go to work believing. You have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God loves you. Same thing you did to get saved, the same thing you got to do to receive love. Amen. Amen. Listen, go to, uh, go to Hebrews chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Start reading at verse 30. If you believe God loves you, say amen. amen. No, no, let me say it again. I, 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 don't, I don't have three points to give you. If you believe, in spite, see, it does not work until you believe it. Amen. Now, hold on a take it. Believing has two components. Believing has a profession and a confession. You profess it first, 
by laying claim to it. You receive it, you accept it, you know it's true. You activate it with your confession by speaking it. So you have to understand, in order for you to receive God's love, you got to believe for it. But believing is not thinking. Believing is action. That's why Jesus told the demoniac thought, if you can believe. All things are possible, then who believe it. So I don't want, I don't want to give you false hope. If you want to walk in the love of God, if you want to see it manifested in your life in spite of you, it's going to be done through your faith. Amen. You just have to claim it in your spirit and then confess it with your mouth. Right. That is contrary to what we have been taught. That's right. You're not going to get his love through dancing. You're not going to walk in his love through speaking in tongues. You have to understand what the love of God is and then you're going to believe for it. Am I losing everybody here? No, How do I believe, preacher? Well, first of all, I acknowledge in my heart, then I confess with my mouth. You acknowledge in your heart that you say. Do you say it? Say amen. amen. Now, the only thing that's left for you to do, I'm going to show you something here that I'm done. For you to do is confess with your mouth the love of God. And you got to confess it until you feel yourself surrounded by it. You got to be able to say in the midst of what you're in, I know I'm going to win because God loves me. Amen. Oh. I know this is going to be fixed because God loves me. Give me love. Just walk with me for a minute. Just walk with me for a minute. This is my assignment. And I'm going to tell you all about the Holy Ghost. Get yourself ready for what God's getting ready to do in this ministry and in your life. I am under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God is telling me, Charles, you're taking this to another level. There are a lot of people who confess it, grace and mercy, but they're afraid to say certain things. I'm about the Holy Ghost here. But he said, I, I have a danger. That's why you went through the hell you went through. That's why you smoked all that dope. That's why you went to jail all the time. That's why everybody rejected you. That's why you went through all the things you went through. Because I've been preparing you for this situation. And I just want to share with somebody. That's why you can't figure out what's going on. Because God connected you to something. And he's going to use you in a way that you could never imagine he's going to use you. You didn't even expect to be in church this morning. You didn't plan to be here this morning. But you're here to receive this message. Because God wants you to understand. I'm going to use you in a way that people don't understand. If I'm going to do something different, then have to be a different process. Don't expect to understand. What for people to understand what you're going through or why I'm putting you through it? You're not going to understand. Don't expect for them to understand it either. I'm raising up some people who come from the gutter. He didn't take me to no Bible school. He brought me from the crack house. He brought me from all kind of He brought me from all kind of lasciviousness and all kind of perversion. And oh, glory to God. Preach it down with like you feel it. He brought me from a place where men have rejected me and told me that my life was over and I was finished. But God said, Charles, I raised you up because I need somebody bold enough to take the truth to the next level. As I'm building my church, I need somebody bold enough to stand up and say, This is what does said the Lord. I need somebody bold enough who don't want to kill me and they accept your rejection. I need somebody bold enough who will stop me and the Lord said I believe it. God said the Lord God of Israel. Let my people go. I wish I had two people who would have made up their mind. I'm going to speak for the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to bless the Lord. I don't care what you think about me. I have to say I'm going to bless him. I hear the Lord saying, I no longer have a need for those who are exalting themselves. I need somebody who will speak what I said, who will read the truth and speak the truth. That's why you're in the mess you're in. That's why you feel alone. Because people can't understand what you're going through. Two o'clock in the morning when you're crying. Don't nobody understand why you're crying. They don't understand why you're desperate. You don't even know what the heck is going on most of the time. God is transitioning you into being a mouthpiece for him. And then he stands you up. He wants you to be this is dust. What said the Lord? Oh, Isn't it funny? I feel that question. Isn't it funny how God does things? Ain't it funny that when Jesus came, he didn't come to no palace? Ain't it funny that he didn't come with horses and horns and chariots? Ain't it funny that even though Israel was looking for him to come as a deliverer, as a king with a sword. In the front of God said, no, I got to get glory out of this situation.
situation. So I'm going to send you to a manger. I'm going to let you come up around some sheep and goat and smelly situation where everybody's already rejected you. So when I raise you up, the king can't take no credit for it. When I raise you up, the smith to himself can't take no credit. Put your good. <coughs> when I raise you up, I didn't tell someone to despise none. Humble beginnings. God always does things with small things. Oh, I'm talking so much. He always takes those who are not educated to give them the best jobs. That people don't have no doubt that he did it. He always gives you stuff that you're not qualified for. But you have to endure until you get there. You have to stand in the pressure and stand in pain and stand in rejection and stand in hopelessness and stand in lack and stand in famine and stand in making it. You have to stand shut down. Come no until he gets you the place where he said, no, I'm going to put you on stage. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, be encouraged. Don't encourage someone and say, be encouraged. Something is about to happen. God has not forgotten you. He's setting you up for something bigger. I told you all last week, at the end of July, something's going to break in your life. If you can receive this word, at the end of July, something is going to happen that's going to blow your mind. If you connect it, if you're being, at the end of July, the Holy Ghost is saying, this warfare is going to be over. And something is about to break loose. New level is going to bring new devils. But this thing that you see now, you will see no more. Then I'll be finished. 